Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue on looking at rhombis and squares, quadrilaterals, parallelograms, all of those good things. We already talked about the rhombus and the unique attributes that are new for a rhombus. And then we looked at a square and said the square has nothing unique. It just steals everything from everybody else, right? It's the follower of the group. It just steals everything from everyone else. We reviewed those special right triangles so that we can help ourselves with squares because that's going to be always helpful there, okay? The next thing we're going to look at, now that we've looked at all of our different types of parallelograms, we're going to graph some quadrilaterals and determine if those quadrilaterals are rhombis, rectangles, or squares. We're going to say everything that they are, because I know if it's a square, it's also a rectangle and a rhombus, right? So we're going to name everything that applies. The first thing I want to do is graph the points. So I'm going to have negative 9, 1, negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 12, negative 2, uh oh, I don't fit, 10, 11, 12, negative 2. That wasn't very nice of me, was it? And one negative four. One negative four. So I've got B, this was E, this is F, and this is G. And we connect them in order B, E, F, G. So B to E, E to F, F to G. And then you go back to the start, back to B. Okay, now, notice right here I have this little symbol. So that tells me that this is indeed a parallelogram. So I already know it's a parallelogram. I just need to decide, can I say, is it a rhombus? Is it a rectangle? Okay, so if it's a rhombus, all my sides will be the same. If it's a rectangle, my consecutive sides will be perpendicular. And then um, if I say it's both a rhombus and a rectangle, then I know it's also a square. So first, let's check and see if it's a rhombus. If it's a rhombus, all my sides will be equal. So let's check and see if our sides are equal. I'm going to first start with this side that I'm going to highlight in orange and figure out how long it is. So I can use my distance formula, but I really like using the Pythagorean theorem instead. I'm just making a little right triangle here and say I'm trying to find this really long hypotenuse on that skinny right triangle. So I know I'm going up to and I'm going over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So I'm trying to find the distance from B to E. Square root of, I'm going to add because I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. I'm going to do 11 squared and 2 squared. So that's 121 plus Four. So that's going to be the square root of 125, which I don't know that that's a perfect square. I don't think it is. The square root of 125 is 11.1803. So I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 125 because if the one across from it is, well, I know the one across from it would be the same, right? Because I know they already told me in the directions this is a parallelogram. So I know that these two sides are both the same and they are whatever the square root of 125 comes out to be. Okay, 11.1803. Okay, so now we want to see is BG and EF, are they also the square root of 125? Okay, so let's check this one here that I'm going to highlight in green from B to G and C. I know I'm going to be looking at a hypotenuse, so I'm going to add inside my square root. When I make this into a little right triangle, I'm looking for the hypotenuse, so that's why I added. I'm going down one, two, three, four, five. Don't forget you don't count when you first put your pen there. I don't count one until I move here. One. That's one, two, three, four, five. So this side here is five. And then here, same thing, I don't count yet. I don't count till I move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've got a 5 and a 10. I always put the bigger one in first. So that's going to be the square root of 100. And then 5 squared is 25. 
So that is the square root of 125. Looky there, they're exactly the same. They are both the square root of 125. So all four of my sides have the same length. So is this a rhombus? Yes, this is a rhombus. I didn't do a very good job of boxing that. Okay? So I know it's a rhombus now. It doesn't look like a rectangle, but I do want to talk about how we know if it's a rectangle or not. Okay? Um, again, we're going to use our slopes because I know that my consecutive sides in a rectangle are perpendicular, which means their slopes will be opposites and reciprocals. Now what's kind of nice is I've already done the work to find the slope for BE. The slope of BE, I can see it's going uphill so it's positive. I'm going up 2 and over 11, so 2 over 11. And then I want the slope of these two, and again I've already done the work here finding how long it was, so the slope of BG and EF, they're both the same because they're parallelogram, is I'm going down 5 and over 10. That does reduce. It reduces to 1 over 2. So here are my two slopes. Oh, this one is negative, right, because it's going downhill. So if that were to be a 90 degree angle in there, which we are pretty confident it's not a 90 degree angle, because when you graph them, they really are to scale. Um, but I can tell that they should be opposite reciprocals if that's 90 degree angles. And they are opposite. I have negative and I have positive. But reciprocal of this one would be 11 over 2. And the reciprocal of this one would be 2 over 1. So they're not reciprocals of each other. This is just a rhombus. We can call it a rhombus. We can call it a parallelogram. We can call it a quadrilateral. Oops, that's two A's. There are too many L's in there. And we can also call it a polygon. This has one, two, three, four different names. The rhombus is the best name, okay? Kind of like I have a bunch of different names. Depending on who you are, there are some names that are better than others, right? Um, there's different ways that you can classify me, if you will. You can classify me as a human. You can classify me as a female. You can classify me as... Miss Bishop, you can classify me as teacher, right? Some people classify me as friend, I hope. Uh, my parents classify me as daughter, right? So I have lots of classification, and depending on who I'm speaking to, some classifications are better than others. In this case, the best classification would always be the most specific, which would be rhombus, okay? Let's look at number 13. And then we'll save area for the final video for today. All right, so when I look at number 13, the first thing I'm going to do is graph those four points, 1, 3, 7, negative 3, 1, negative 9, and negative 5, 3. So 1, 3 is here. 7, negative 3 is here. 1, negative 9, 1, I almost went way over the wrong place. 1, negative 9 is way down here. And... Negative 5, negative 3. Negative 5, negative 3. Okay, so we want to know what this shape is. This was B. This was E. This was F. And this was G. We're going to do the exact same process we did on the last one. Okay, first thing I need to do is I need to know, are my sides the same? And since I already know it's a parallelogram, because it tells me right here that symbol parallelogram, I know my opposite sides are going to be parallel, and I know they're already going to be congruent. So I know this is equal to this. I know this one is equal to this. So if I can find these two, I'll know if all four are the same or not. Okay, I'm going to do the same process I did last time. I'm going to pick one side and turn it into a little right triangle. so that I can find out how long this piece here is, okay? So from B to G, which is also the same as E to F, I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm gonna go over, again, don't count till you move, one, right? I'm counting one is right there, one, 
two, three, four. I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, they're both six. Okay, so that's going to be the square root of six squared plus six squared, which is 36 plus 36. So that's the square root of 72. And I just really need to know that it's the square root of 72. I don't really need to turn it, oops, 72. I don't have to turn it into a decimal because I'm just going to check and see, does this also come out to the square root of 72? Okay. All right, so now let's try um, G, F, G, F and see how long that is when I turn it into a little right triangle. So if I come straight down and straight over, so I make a little right triangle there. I'm going to come down one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, just like last time, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, six again, just like last time. So they're going to be six squared and six squared. That's going to come out to the same thing. They are going to both be the square root of 72. Square root of 72. So this, indeed, is a rhombus. Okay, now, is it a rectangle? Let's check our slopes and see. My slopes need to be opposites and reciprocals if they are, if it is a rectangle. Okay, because they need to be perpendicular slopes. So my slope here, I can already see, I already looked at my rise over my run. So my slope of BG is I have to go up 6 and over 6, and it's in the positive direction, and that reduces to 1. So my slope is 1 for this piece here. okay? And then my slope for this piece, for these two, my slope for GF, this time I'm going in the negative, I'm going downhill, so it's a negative. I'm going down 6 and to the right 6, so negative 6 over 6 is a negative 1, also negative, okay? Or also 1, but negative. So I need to check my two slopes and decide, are they opposites and reciprocals? It's easy to see these are definitely opposites, right? One's positive, one's negative, they're opposites. But are they reciprocals? If I flip them over, do I get the number from the other one? Well, 1 is like 1 over 1. 1 is like 1 over 1. So when you flip it over, it's going to stay 1, right? 6 over 6, when I flip it over, is still 6 over 6. So these are opposites. They are reciprocals. They are perpendicular, which means this is a rectangle. If it's a rhombus and it's a rectangle, then guess what? That means it is a square. Okay? If it's a square and a rectangle and a rhombus, it's also a parallelogram, which we already knew because it told me up here. Which means it's also a quadrilateral. Let's see if I can spell it right this time. There we go. And which means it's also a polygon. So all of these are good names for this shape, but whenever it asks me for the most specific or the best classification of this, out of all of these, I would get it wrong if I choose anything but square. Square is the most specific classification because it covers every single one of these when I call this a square. Okay? All right, in our last video for today's lesson, we are going to talk about finding the area of rhombi and squares. All right, so come on back to that last video. Thanks for watching.